welcome to a multitude of counselors. So glad you came to our program today. We are devoted to helping us all better understand mental health, psychological issues from a biblical standpoint, and also to, to present to you viable, practical solutions for some of the most perplexing problems of life. I'm sitting here with my treatment team today, and I want to introduce them one by one to you. First, we have David Guerrero. He's from Wisconsin, and he runs a wonderful ministry called Rekindle the Flame. It's a very inspiring title. And under that ministry, he functions in a number of capacities. He's really taken very seriously the admonition to develop ourselves. That's, we're told our first duty to God and man is self-development. Ellen White said that. Yes. And you've taken that very seriously and you have developed competencies in coaching, pastoring, counseling, and now you're getting your doctoral in uh, naturopathy. Yeah. Is that right? So he's a very thoroughly rounded person. You also teach coaching and uh -huh. write books and present seminars. You're a crazy man, you. <laughs> but he says that he does well with time management, so I'm going to trust him on that one. Okay. I also appreciate the fact that we have Christina Sokoto here. She's from Georgia, and she's a licensed, uh, why do I blank on this? Masters, in, Masters in social work. There's all these letters sometimes. MSW, right? That's what they say. LMSW. LSM, LMSW. And she's from Georgia and she works at Wildwood Lifestyle Center. And she likes to help people through anxiety, mood disorders, and phobias. <coughs> and she offers a lot in regard to lifestyle remedies that seem to help people with mental health issues. We also yeah. have Dr. Jean Wright. Dr. Jean is from my hometown of Philadelphia. He goes to my home church, and he's my homeboy, oh, <laughs> as wow. they say. Wow. And he is an amazing guy with a lot of talent and a lot of capability. He works for the department, he's the director of Behavioral Health and Justice Services in the Department of Behavioral Health in Philadelphia. And I can't believe I remembered that one. <coughs> and he also has a book out. What's the name of the book again? Find Strength in Your Struggle. Find Discover Strength in, you. in Your mm. Struggle. Love that title. And you're shopping that book around a lot and doing some book signings and some speaking engagements as well. Absolutely. And on I the side. Left <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk to him about time management too. And on the side, Dr. Jean likes to work with community forgiveness and restoration, working with the prisons. Mm. Yes. And he's done a lot of really interesting things in the community in that regard. Hopefully Praise that'll come up in the course of the program. Mm. And I also have my co-host here, Rob Davison. <laughs> Rob has a private practice in counseling with Abide Counseling Network. And he likes to help a variety of presentations, including individuals, families, couples. He likes to help men develop servant leadership skills and biblical manhood and integrity. So that is so needed in our world today. And I'm so thankful that you're here to share with us and help direct this program. I want to talk about our topic today. Our topic is conflict. Conflict is a big one, isn't it? Yes. So a definition of conflict would be a serious disagreement or argument. The prevalence of conflict would be that it is pandemic everywhere. We have sinful human beings. We have conflict, don't we? In fact, sometimes those conflicts escalate into what are called anthropogenic disasters. Did you know that that's the technical term for a war? Hmm. an anthropogenic disaster. And just to mention one statistic, uh, World War II alone, 75 million people killed. Now that's what I call a conflict. Mm -hmm. But realize that all of those conflicts begin with emotional conflicts and breakdowns in communication and arguments between individuals and then they mm -hmm. escalate and fan out into those anthropogenic disasters. So I would say that the cause by and large is poor listening. People don't generally listen. They typically want to advance their own agenda, their own view, their own rights, their own righteousness in many cases, but they don't often listen to the other person and take in their subjective standpoint. We see in James chapter 1 verse 19 it says, let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. What we find is that people are generally quick to speak and slow to hear, and so they are quick to what? Come angry. Wrath. They're quick to escalate, and typically, if we can learn to change that around, we can learn how to de-escalate. Is this why God gave us the two ears and the one mouth? And one mouth, that's right. Just a thought. It's true. It's the symbol of what God wants. It to be really big Amen. on listening and, and kind of slow on oh, speaking. That's powerful. 
The prognosis, though, is always positive, right? Because Jesus heals. People can learn how to listen and they can learn how to resolve conflict. So some of the methods of resolving conflict would be simply meeting with the person with whom you have a conflict and in a spirit of Christ-like love, pray and talk through the issue. We don't typically do that. When we have a disagreement, there's some psychological tension that builds up and we need to release that mm -hmm. tension. Often we release it with another person instead of going to the source of the tension and trying to release it in the context of that disagreement with that person and bring it to a productive conclusion instead of a destructive conclusion which is gossiping and backbiting is what it often devolves into. Now I'm not saying that in every case. If there's been abuse and someone with much more power, has exploited a person of much less power, I do not recommend that that person goes directly back to the abuser for a second helping. I recommend that they find an advocate and that it is resolved through advocacy. But in most cases, it's adult on adult, we're brothers and sisters, and we can go directly to the source of that conflict and we can work it through in a spirit of Christ-like love. But sometimes it's gotten beyond that point and that's where an advocate comes in and I'm always throwing up my hands and saying, who will advocate? Who will be that third person in the conversation that will help mediate? And that often needs to be a professional counselor, in my experience, someone who is like literally designated in their career to helping people through these things. So some of the things I like to use in a counseling context is the EAR technique, E-A-R, empathy. And communication is all about establishing empathy with one another. Empathy equals ask and reflect. You ask questions of that person to draw them out. That means not defensive questions like how long have you been this stupid or something like that, <laughs> but, but sincere questions, wanting to know more about that person's subjective experience and also reflecting back to them what you've heard them say and making sure that you got it right. And we're gonna talk more about that, I'm sure, in the course of this conversation. But also I wanna bring out that the FBI uses something called the behavioral change stairway model. Have you guys heard of this? So when there's a hostage situation and someone who is trained in the FBI goes to de-escalate that hostage situation, they use this behavioral change stairway model, which begins with, no surprise here, active listening. And on the foundation of that active listening, they develop empathy with that person. And then on the foundation of that empathy, they develop <coughs> rapport. And on the foundation of that rapport, they develop influence over that person. And finally, when the influence is established, they can ask for behavior change. Put your gun down, come out of the hotel room, let the people go, or whatever it happens to be. If this is used by the FBI to de-escalate hostage situations, how much more can we use active listening and empathy and rapport to de-escalate our own conflicts? Can I? Can I get an amen from you on that? Amen. Okay, guys, so what have you used that has helped in your efforts to help de-escalate your own conflicts and resolve conflict used with other people, with clients? One thing I think that's important, Jennifer, and I know we, we will t probably talk about a lot of uh, methods and, and, and tools that people can use in, in conflict, but in today's world, the reason why people can't come together and resolve their conflict is time. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where people are not taking the time to listen, the mm -hmm. time to speak. And so one thing that I try to do when I'm counseling a couple is I will ask them the question, how much time are you spending together to resolve these issues? And usually what I'll hear is, well, we don't have time. time. We're too busy. We're too busy. I'm working. I'm taking care of the kids. And so what I try to help them to see that if there's an issue that is just laying there, and they're just letting it lay there. And it's just laying there. Mm. What's happening to each individual, the emotions are building. And they're not resolving their conflict. And then the conflict will take care of them because one day it's going to do what? It's explode. going to explode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe helping individuals to see the importance of spending that time together to come together to resolve the issue is, is, is critical, it's crucial. You're saying mm -hmm. that people can't really, in a close relationship, people can't really avoid conflict. For instance, in a marriage, you can't really avoid it, and so you're saying make it a priority. It's more important yeah. than the food you eat almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I, I think that's important because one of the things I try to do is 
take the emphasis off a negative definition mm. of conflict is. Mm -hmm. Conflict just means a disagreement. It means you have an opinion and I have an opinion. I love that. And so if we can start there with removing that negative connotation mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. let's talk about our difference of opinion, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of softens it a little bit mm -hmm. and then we can move forward. It's kind of like the word confrontation. You know, confrontation just means in the here and now, mm -hmm. not waiting two weeks to tell me what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's mm -hmm. talk about what the disagreement is now. And so the conflict is actually, it's, a, it's an energy thing. Mm -hmm. It allows things mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. yes. Conflict allows oh, things to change. So you're yes. normalizing yes. And, and really redeeming mm -hmm. conflict. Absolutely. Yeah. You're not like dreading it and catastrophizing. Right. You're saying this is, this is a good thing and we yes. can use it right. It's yes. going to lead to good answers. It's yeah. positive Great. energy to That's cause beautiful. change. Yeah. Exactly. And now I can relax myself and not think about you know the negative part of it. So can we see it as an opportunity? Conflict is an opportunity. It is Absolutely. an opportunity. Yeah. An opportunity. Yes. Yes. And as a Christian it's an opportunity to invite Christ yes. Amen. into the experience Absolutely. and let him help us. See, this is why I have a team. I feel like, you know, if I was up here, I'd probably just be catastrophizing conflict and telling people what a problem it was and how to fix it. But, you know, you, you're right. It can be a problem. Yeah, I know. It can be. Let's approach it as if it is just a disagreement. That's right. an opportunity. Love so. it. This is exactly opportunity. how I approach a couple. When they first come yeah. in, I start exactly where you started there. And I really flesh that out. I take my time <clears throat> because they never see conflict as something positive. Right. Mm -hmm. But I say, you know what? If we don't have conflict, we don't get to know each other at our core. But through conflict, we can not only get to know each other, but we, in the conflict itself, if it's done right, and we can teach them the right way, we can bond closer yes. together. I love that. And then I take it to another level. I say, look at the great controversy that we're in today. Yeah. Look at the, in fact, if, if we really study Revelation, God will be closer to us and closer bonded as Jesus is with, the, with his scars forever because of the conflict that That's happened. That's right. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are learning to do this conflict together correctly. Yes. And yeah. so and it just puts a new perspective. You're on. saying that God redeems conflict. Oh, absolutely. To great ends and, and yes. to great good. In my experience, when people never have conflict, for instance, in a marriage, one person is completely losing their individuality to the other. Mm. And so conflict really shows that there are two individuals there and that is a positive. Yeah, a relationship without conflict is one without energy. Yes. That's right. Yes. And, and I think there's research, from what I've read, there's research that the couples that do the best, that have the healthiest relationships, are the ones that do escalate, but they know when to back out yes. of an escalation. Mm -hmm. They know when it's getting too hot, versus the couples that never escalate really are usually kind of, but they're, they're, they're stonewalling or they're detached or something has gone wrong in the relationship. So we can help the couple see that it's in conflict or the individuals yeah. to see that, you know, that we're all created in God's image. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> God wants to restore us into his image. Mm -hmm. And in conflict, God is trying to come in, he, he's asking us to invite him into the experience so he can help us become more like him. Right. Love that, love that. One of that. the things that Powerful. I will do when I have a, a couple come in, and many times it's only one individual while their husband or wife is at home when they're in the lifestyle program, mm -hmm. is really try to get them to be connected or redevelop that relationship with mm -hmm. Christ or have a deeper connection with Christ. Because if I can just read this real quick and then I'll explain more about it. It says, The heart filled with that love which thinketh no evil will not be on the watch to notice discourtesies and grievances of which he may be the object. Mm -hmm. The will of God is that His love shall close the eyes, the ears, and the heart to all such provocations and to all the suggestions with which Satan would fill them. So if you notice the key here, it's when they are filled with the love of Christ, then they won't notice every little thing because I think that conflict can sometimes be mm -hmm. um, exacerbated by right. little triggers that you could just overlook. Love right. covers a multitude right. of sins. Now there, it is necessary sometimes to of course to address things and not to only be an avoidant which many of us are mm -hmm. um, and so it is important to address things but if we're filled with that right spirit with the love of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. then we're going to have the right spirit to be able to address those issues that are needed to be addressed. Christina, I love that yeah, so much. She's going to bring um, out a really good text. I, I, I'm not going to take the time to read all this, but what I will say to couples is before you decide to talk about something, before mm -hmm. we get into the heated, mm -hmm. I want you to take the time to look at Colossians 3. And just look at, um, I say the whole chapter, but it's particularly verses 12 mm -hmm. through, it looks like uh, 17. Oh my goodness, that just softens the spirit. I can almost see it on their faces when we take the time to read that. Well, can Before you read we just a little bit of it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Therefore, as the elect of God, 
holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful, and let the word of God dwell, uh, mm -hmm. uh, dwell well, in you richly, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, and on. Just, and, and, and Just hearing that, I feel my heart soften toward people that I have conflict with. Amen. And just being honest. It, yeah, it's, it's the spirit working yeah. before, right. before we yeah. actually get and into it. And I think, too, that, you know, what needs to, what I tell people is that when, they're, when they experience a conflict, that they might need to take a little time out. And they might yes. need to go away, pray, it's be on time. their knees, and it's spend time. time with God until they have that, the yeah. spirit of God, until they are, uh, have yeah. the Lord's love in their heart, and then they can go out and address it in the right spirit. Yeah. So it does take some time. It doesn't mean that we have to address it right when it yeah. happens. It does sometimes take yeah. some time to And what to you're be saying is key that. because the verse started put on. And some of the questions that we get from people, well, how do I put that on? Mm -hmm. Well, she just explained how to do it. Mm -hmm. Come aside, pray, ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the influence of God's Spirit, mm -hmm. yeah. so I can put that on, and then yeah. I can come out right. ready, Cloak. equipped we by the Spirit. Jesus day yeah. by day, moment by yeah. moment. We can't do anything right no. without Him. <laughs> I think another key is uh, to, to understand your intention mm -hmm. with trying to resolve a conflict. Mm -hmm. it, what is your intention, and especially with mm -hmm. couples, is your intention mm -hmm. to win the argument? Mm -hmm. right? yeah. you know? What is your intention? Mm -hmm. You know, with love and mercy, your intention should be mm -hmm. to resolve our love and resolve mm -hmm. our commitment to one another. Yes. And to Amen. understand right. the other side yes. rather yes. than to justify Prove the relationship. Yes. Yes. And, and you said something in another program about, you know, defending ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we just take 20 minutes to just be quiet and listen to what the other person has said and not respond, yeah. Yeah. there's no need for self-defense yeah. if I'm in this with you. Mm -hmm. And so what is Beautiful. my intention? Yeah. You know, it Beautiful. shouldn't be to win. Yeah. It should be for us to move forward. And that's oh beautiful. Boy. That's, that's like beautiful. an arrow to my heart. So real quick, would you, uh, just, just real quick, Jennifer, because this is a powerful point. When I'm counseling couples, when I'm when I'm doing marriage coaching, one thing that is key and it seems to help is I say, let's look at, let's focus on counseling the marriage. Let's focus on coaching the marriage, and yeah. it takes two. It takes two, and it takes their eyes off of each other and onto the marriage. What do we have to do to fix mm -hmm. that marriage? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's beautiful. Like that. yeah. That's yeah. good. Very quickly, I'm going to do this presenting problem. It says here, in their 60s upper middle class and Hispanic, Mr. and Mrs. <coughs> Fernando report a long-standing conflict with their ex-best friends, which are actually Mrs. Fernando's sister and husband, the Acostas. The couples came to the, to the area 20 years before to plant the church in order to reach the Hispanic population of the city. All went well until the church voted Mr. Fernando into the position of lay pastor of the church. Because the same honor was not extended to Mr. Acosta, he wrestled with hurt feelings. As you chat with Mr. Fernando, you sense that his approach to the situation could have been more sensitive and gracious in a very delicate situation. Mrs. Fernando is quiet for most of the session. How do you proceed? I just want to say something real quick, and that is that these presenting problems, you know, resemble to some degree things that I've worked with, and this particular couple hadn't spoken to the other couple for 12 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And of course, you using the reflective listening, but also praying for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. for over several days, the ice finally broke, and this couple just, they loved each other, really. Mm -hmm. And all this conflict had piled up. It was just so gratifying for me to see that breakthrough, and that they sat down together and started chatting like old friends. It was just so meaningful. Shows mm -hmm. you how powerful hurt feelings can be. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yes. Yeah. And the feelings, oh my goodness, you know, before we can resolve any conflict, we have to hear each other's feelings. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you, and you talked about this in yeah. the beginning. And we talked in another program about the listener speaker technique. This yeah. is very powerful in terms of hearing each other's feelings yeah. with I statements. Yeah. Because if we can hear each other, we don't have to agree, mm -hmm. but we're, we're hearing, we're validating that the other person's feelings yeah. are real to them. Yeah. And then this, this softens the mood before we even attempt to get into resolving yeah. the conflict. Yeah. We have to hear one another. So what happened here was 
Mr. Fernando got the position and Mr. Acosta didn't, and there was, it was a delicate situation. Sure. It was a difficult situation right there, but Mr. Fernando's insensitivity to that and Mr. Acosta's inability to just admit, my feelings, are, I'm wounded, I feel, in, okay. you know, hurt, um, really compounded the situation very quickly. So what is it about actually putting your feelings into words that is so helpful? Um, because people do communicate their feelings whether they put them into words or not. Here you see it communicated by, I'm mm -hmm. not talking to you, you mm -hmm. know. Stonewalling, you know, what is it about putting them into words? Help I mean, me. You need to start with I statements. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes when you start. What is it about an I statement though? Because I'm owning it, I'm accountable Exactly, for that exactly. When it seems That's obvious, yeah. but not, I mean, maybe the person may think, oh, it's obvious that they know how I feel. Right. I don't really need to say anything, but in fact, nobody knows. Right. Right? right, and and so it's actually very important to say that. But I do want to say there is a balance. Of course, we are not to be subdued to our our emotions, are not to be in control of us, but we are to root out unholy emotions. Yeah, and so we do need to identify emotions so that they can be rooted out and they can be resolved. But if I'm in a situation like this and I'm genuinely wounded, and i it may be my lack of maturity, but it's not going to help for me to go. Oh, I shouldn't feel that way, so I'm just going to pretend I don't. There comes no, an integrity all. issue. You are who you are and in a situation like this I think it would have been appropriate for Mr. Acosta to say you know what it hurts mm -hmm. it hurts it may be because I'm not growing up yet but it hurts and I just want to be honest about that mm -hmm. I think that would be a lot better than I shouldn't you know right. because that's only going to stifle it and then he's going to um, he's going to show it another way and these are not just friends these these are family this is like a really close relationship this is Fernando this this you know i don't right. go up to the mailman and say you know how i feel today mailman <laughs> but my close yeah. friends There's they a need relationship here. exactly okay and and the silence by mrs fernando tells me she was quietly supporting her husband yeah. but maybe didn't agree with how he handled it right. you mm -hmm. know and when you look at this yeah why couldn't mr acosta say to a friend or a family yeah. member you know i i worked as hard and, and, yeah. and I feel badly that I wasn't recognized. Yeah. My hard work wasn't recognized. Yeah. And Mr. Fernando knows they did it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Acosta knows they did it together. That's right. But that's where the split up. It is. needed to be talked hmm. about. And I think our role as therapists is to be able to identify those emotions so that yeah. we can help them root out those unholy emotions and so that they can be in harmony with the... So with suppression the isn't what we're going for. No. no. We're getting for, we're if, going for If the, they're there, they're there. So if they're suppressed, they're still there. So they're really confessing a sin, really, when they, when right. they admit mm -hmm. that they're having these unholy right. emotions. And we can't get past our sins unless we can confess them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are we also tr helping them to identify those feelings and to name them? Yes. Because that's very important. You know, I have a question for you, and it's this. How are you able to get them to come together? Yeah. Well, I actually went to where they lived and spent several days with them, and it was just a little, kind of a long, drawn-out thing, but it really, it really was key, just spending that time. They set aside, you know, the chunk of days with me to work through, because they knew that they needed the help, so, huh. yeah. And that is so important, and we were talking about that earlier, mm -hmm. and as our audience is listening, I would encourage them, if they're having conflict, to take the time yes. to come together to resolve yeah. the issues. And if they can't do it on their own, to find a competent counselor or therapist to help them to work through this. And you know what, it didn't look good. Like I had made a list, they both made their grievance lists, and, and as we worked through, it didn't look like it was gonna resolve. There was one individual that had gotten so wounded that it just didn't seem like it was gonna change. And so I, I told them, you know, you may have, one of you may have to move away. We're probably not gonna get through all these <coughs> items on the list, but all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came. I, I really Amen. can't explain it. And there was a, just this softening this, that came, this influence that came. And the one that I thought was going to hold out actually said, no, you know, I was wrong too. Even though I got hurt, I was wrong in the way I handled it. And from that point forward, it just like the floodgates of heaven, I'm serious, like Amen. opened up and all of a sudden this healing wave came in and they were within a couple hours talking like old friends. It was truly Amen. remarkable. Amen. Do you all find as Christian counselors that sometimes we wonder what in the world did we do and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is doing something yeah. that we just, we just see that yeah. it's, it's not really us, but somehow the Spirit is yeah. in the session. He is the great counselor. That's yes, right. yes. That's and we right. need to always invite him into our counseling sessions, Amen. the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Amen. <clears throat> I know. I've, I'm, I'm helpless without him. I would, I would wreck people, and I know that as a counselor. So I pray with my clients, mm -hmm. you know, and I tell them I need God. This is why I want to pray, you know. And how, this is too how much for me. 
how important is it for us to be so yeah. abiding with Christ ourselves, so in tune? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Shall I recap? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So you started out talking with about the EAR, which I love is empathy, ask, reflecting back. And even the FBI uses this to de-escalate situations. Mm. They don't use EAR. That, that's I wrote, but the FBI uses reflective listening. Reflective listening. listening. Yeah. yeah okay. So that's, that's something that we That would we be can, cool if the FBI used something that I wrote, but you know, not yet. So we can, we can model that for our clients, the reflective mm -hmm. listening and, mm -hmm. and the whole bit. I really like what you said, David, about life is so busy that we're not taking time to resolve our conflicts. We just need to learn to take the time. We, mm. We've talked about that. And I love what you said, Gene, about conflict is not a negative thing. It doesn't have That's to right. be a negative thing. We can normalize oh, the yeah. conflict because so many couples just, just hate the conflict itself. But yet, if we can put a, a new face on it and say that this actually can be for our good if we learn how to do this the right way. See it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It can be a bonding experience. It means people care. Yes. And, and, and also through the bonding, we can actually learn to know one another on a deeper level, more mm -hmm. so than we than knew each other before. We talked about getting our spirits, not only mm -hmm. as counselors, but the couples or whoever going through conflict in a right spirit, using scripture, using prayer to, to soften the spirit. Amen. We talked about what is our intention? What are mm -hmm. we thinking in conflict? Are we just in this to win? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if we are, then we shouldn't be in a big rush to win. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to slow down. I statements were talked about. I statements are wonderful ways to get to, to the emotions that each of us are feeling. Uh, I'm feeling such and such because such and such. And then how can we not validate the other person's feelings? We don't have to agree with those feelings, but those feelings are real. So I statements are important to learn. Emotions are critical. When, we're, when we want to move towards conflict resolution, we have to, we have to do that. Um, our role is to help identify those emotions as counselors. A lot of times those emotions are just so mixed up in the conflict that it's just a big jumble. And then we talked lastly, spending that time, spending time to come together, letting the Holy Spirit work. Someone said that it is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak up and remove all doubt. The Proverbs says something similar, Proverbs 17, 28. Even if a fool is thought wise, he keeps, even a fool, sorry, is thought wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue. Mm. I think we all agree that we need to learn better listening skills and we've tried to help you do that in this program of a multitude of counselors. We're gonna be talking in future programs about anger, about communication, so please join us again. We so appreciate your support and pray for us as we work through some of life's most perplexing problems in the faith and the strength of Jesus.